Honorable Samuel for example for a while ago just picked his nomination form to contest for the chairmanship position of the opposition and this of course he's been a vice chair and uh, if i'm not wrong the director of elections at the moment and uh, he's been a regional minister before a member of parliament before so clearly he's been serving the ndc for quite some time now. and now he has chosen to put himself forward to be elected as the Ogboro, the chairman for the party uh, let me just go to him and briefly ask him uh, what are messages for the delegate because i mean people say the elections are quite dicey you might not know whether they're going to throw their weight behind you honorable thank you very much for speaking to join us today now i mean you picked up nomination form um one will ask i mean what does it really mean for you i mean picking a nomination form thank you very much and let me say good afternoon to your uh, viewers uh, Indeed, it means a lot to me because uh, as an individual, I have contributed, uh, dedicated the greater part of my working life towards serving the NDC in various capacities. In fact, uh, the NDC was formed in 1992, and I was part and parcel of those uh, formative years of the party. In 1993, I was made a DC chief executive. So you can imagine that if I was a DC in 1993, uh, then, of course, 1993 94, then it shows that I am a foundation member of the formation of the party. I've risen through the constituency to become a DCE. I have also represented the party in parliament on two occasions for the good people of Antioquia constituency. I've been a deputy minister for the Eastern region. Subsequently, I became a regional minister. I, in terms of party work, uh, during the reorganization of the party when we lost election in 2000 and the reorganization committee was set up at the national level in 2001. I was part of the reorganization team made up of Dr. Beda Samoa, Elijah Muhammad Drisu, uh, Mr. Uh, Ambassador Lee Okran, Ama Benyuadu, uh, and several other people, Elijah Hudia and others, who toured the whole country to seek the views of our party as to the way forward. And I believe that it was through that consultative processes that the NDC uh, went into the 2002 uh, Congress at La Trade Fair site. Uh, um, you know, uh, that was the first time that we decided to abandon our consensus approach to democracy and open ourselves up to uh, primaries where everybody who wants to contest a position ought to be voted for. It was at that 2002 uh, Congress that I was contested and was elected as national organizer of the party. In fact, during that time, when the MPP had assumed office and the media and everybody was on us, it took people with courage to step out and defend the party. And I was one of the few people, including Amor and others, who were all over the place, you know, defending the party day in and day out. As a national organizer, I worked tirelessly towards the 2004 election. Unfortunately, we did very well, but we could not win. In 2005 in Koforidua, I was again uh, given the second mandate as a national organizer in a very, very difficult uh, Congress, if you recall, where Dr. Beda Samoa lost to Dr. Kamnaji. Right, right. And uh, again, I contested with uh, Dr. Potofi, our current chairman, yeah. and I beat him. I beat him to it very, very soundly. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember how many votes that I got, 999, and as against 400 and something. So. Um, that gave me the impetus to continue to work hard for the party. It was no wonder that together with Professor Mills, and who was our flag bearer, uh, the current president, uh, uh, the uh, uh, immediate past president, uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, and a host of others, we worked very, very hard between 2006 and 2008. And eventually, by the grace of God, we won power in January 2009. His Excellency, the late President John Ivan uh, Satamels uh, was sworn in as a President of the Republic of Ghana. So I must say that I have gotten a wealth of experience serving this party. I've been an apprentice under Dr. Beda Samoan's administration, under Dr. Komnaji's administration for eight years, and under Dr. Kofi Potofi administration for four years. You can be apprentice for more than 16 years. I think that the time has come for me to go behind the steering wheel and drive the NDC 
to the destination that we always want. Honorable, is it your conviction to run or members of the party have prevailed on you, um, petitioned you to contest as the chairman for the party? In actual fact, initially, it was not my intention to contest for the election. Uh, even though I felt that I had the capacity and what it takes to lead the party because I, I have been around for a very long time. I have, even when I was a, a minister of state, I was drafted into the national executive by becoming a national executive committee member. I was in charge of the, uh, the party biometric registration and then supervised the first nationwide universal adult suffrage election to elect a flag bearer for the party. I, I led the whole process and it was very, very successful where President Ramon Mahama was elected. I must say that coupled with all this, I was also given the responsibility as director of elections. And I think that the, the, the whole objective of a formation of a party is to contest and win an election. And I believe that having garnered all this experience, expertise, and strategies, I, I'm in a better position to lead the party now. Strategically, I think I'm a strategic candidate for the party. First, my human relations is very good. I connect with all aspects of the party. The party has a lot of caucuses. When it comes to the DCE's caucus, I was a former DC, so I connect with the DCEs. When it comes to the MP's caucus, I was a former MP, I connect with the MPs. When it comes to the minister's caucus, I was a former minister, so I connect with the ministers. When it comes to party caucus, I have worked from the constituency to the region to the national. So I am a very well-known face in the party. I have mentored a lot of people who are now occupying places in the party, both at constituency, regional, and national level. And I believe that uh, I have what it takes. Again, I am a, a member of faculty of the Ghana uh, Institute of Social Democracy. And I teach, and I teach very well, political organization, political activism, grassroots mobilization, campaign planning and coordination. And, and I believe that all these are assets that the party needs. So I sat back, I prayed to my God, I did a lot of consultation, I have had a meeting with all the former national chairmen. Okay. I have met with Alaji Isifuali, our first national chairman. I have met with Dr. Khamnaji, I have met with Dr. Beda Samwa uh, to seek their blessings and to seek their guidance. And I believe that I have done what it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand the party and I believe that I have spoken to all those who are movers and shakers of the party before coming to the conclusion of declaring to contest this election. Right. One of the big questions one would ask is that, yes, uh, you've gone through the, the ranks of, of, of the party and clearly you have a wealth of assets, as you put it, but your current chairman is still in position, yes, I mean, and they're asking, I mean, why would you want to contest someone who has also decided to lead the party uh, uh, into the 2020 elections? Well, as of now, I haven't heard from him mm. that you want to contest. But as I indicated... In the likely event that he's going to contest... As, I, I, as I indicated, in 2014, mm. when we went to Kumasi, uh, people prevailed on me to go for the ultimate. Right. But I said that, Alaji uh, Hudiyaya, Chairman Potofi, and uh, Dana Budaku yeah, were well, my seniors, so let me give them the chance and then go for vice chairman. I've said that I've been an apprentice and I have served very well. I've served all of them very, very, very well. And I believe that this is the time. The party needs a young, dynamic, vibrant person who will make the party attractive and who will connect with all facets of, uh, of, of groups in the party. And I think that I have that. My, my interpersonal relationship is, is very good. You think your chairman doesn't have that? Well, I am assessing myself. I'm not assessing him. I think that he was given the opportunity to lead the party. He, has led, the, he has led the party for four years. Mm. Uh, he in like no, no, no. In terms of, uh, we, we take collective responsibility. And I think that we work together as a team. We lost painfully in the last election. Mm. I think that sometimes, you know, in football, we have good players, good coaches, good team managers. What it requires is some edge that you have over others that will enable you to win a match. So you see that when the, the clash of the titans uh, happen, it, it, it takes a certain somebody who can go the extra mile. I think that I, I have what it takes to go the extra mile. 
I have decided to use the three R's as my main campaign message for this election. The first one is to, the first R is to revive. Revive the party. Revive the party. Revive the structure. So of the, the NDC party. is dead, clearly. No, the NDC is not dead. But, but you see, that's not the dead. structures of the party were not well activated during the last election. Because we win election at the polling stations. Mm -hmm. And I have, I'm a product of the grassroots, and I know that the grassroots was not well motivated. Mm -hmm. The system was, the structures were not well oiled. And so we we'll revive. Again, we will revive because I said that the NDC has two spirits. Okay. The first spirit is the never say die spirit okay. of the NDC, as a class of folk call themselves, mm -hmm. never say die until the bones are rotten. Mm -hmm. The second spirit is the Kuma Pema, Apimbeba which Akumasi Asante Koto has adopted. These two spirits is what has kept NDC together. Mm. We have a lot of people who have worked for the party, cadres and others who have worked for the party, who are dormant, who, who are latent. Their potential is not being utilized. Mm. We will have to revive all those and the, bring them onto mainstream organization. I will make everybody an organizer in the party because I believe that organization decides everything. And I want to make the NDC an election winning machine again, you see? Because the purpose of setting up the party is to contest election and win so that we can form a government. Secondly, I'm talking about the second R, which is restore. We need to restore the values which made the NDC tick. So you agree with the former president that the party has lost its values? We need to we need we, we need to restore to our core values because so you know the party yes the party as it moves on a lot new more people come in new people come in to add up and we need to remind ourselves that is why the party has set up a school the Ghana Institute of Social Democracy one of the the the, the syllabus is to take people through party history take people through the party philosophy and what the party stands for. And so we need to restore those basic values that makes us what we are and identify ourselves as NDC, a social democratic party, which cares for the, the, the disadvantage and the socially ex ex exclusion of the people and come out of policies and program and, and realize that we are each other's keeper and that it is not a system of each one for himself, God for us all. The third R is to recapture. In fact, the, the, the purpose and objective of a political party is to win power. And so our, my objective is that our main mission is to go and recapture power from our opponent, the MPP, in 2020. In 2020. So that explains my three R's. Mm. Revive, restore, and recapture. And, recapture. and you think it's going to work for you? Absolutely. Right, so we'll be having a conversation with the director of election and of course the first vice chair of the opposition NDC. He has put himself forward to be elected as the chairman of the party. He's been talking about three key things or three uh, thematic areas he's going to um, execute as part of his campaign. And he's talking about revive, restore and recapture. Now, there are suggestions that all the national executives, I mean, there should be a total overhaul because all of you, I mean, not excluding any of them, failed the party woefully in 2016 and that you don't deserve another chance to be elected. Even though, I mean, I know the director of election position is not an elected position, it's an appointment. But you partly contributed because you, you represented the party at the IPAC level, decisions were made, and several times you met at the IPAC meeting. So, so, so clearly they are saying that there should be a total overhaul. You don't deserve a second chance. What, what will be your response to these critics? You know that... Even Almighty Messi and Ronaldo, sometimes they go into football matches and their team lose. So all these are not equal. I will not say that. In fact, anybody who comes up with that proposal doesn't understand politics and doesn't know what institutional memory and experiences. Take the MPP. When they came, uh, they lost power. Uh, they had some executives who steered the party, even when we were in government and they lost power. They had to go back to the experienced ones. Mm. They went back for McManu, they went back for uh, Dambutri, they went back for Lord Komi and others to come and play a key role in the last election. It means that. But they were non they were performing non executive roles. 
Well, Mark Benu was not an elected member of the party. Well, but I'm saying but that. I am saying that their their experiences were brought to bear on the election that they won, mm -hmm. and so you cannot wish away experience. Anybody who tells you that. I have served on IPAC, for instance, for the past 16 years or so. Mm. The wealth of experience that I bring to IPAC, you go to the Electoral Commission and ask them, you have been at IPAC meeting, mm. and you yourself will bear testimony of the fact that, I mean, to wipe the slate mm. is a suicidal mission. Mm. To say that NDC should wipe the slate and let all the current executive go is to say that we are committing a political suicide mm. and will pay a very dear price for it, and I will not go for that prescription. So, finally, I'm sure that very soon, um, October 20 is the elections, right? The, the Congress. Yes. Yes. So, um, Honorable Samuel for some before, Betimo did so, let's say, Potofi perhaps, and the other candidates. What are your chances in there and percentage wise? Well, I cannot. My faith will be in the hands of the delegates. But if anything, if, the, if it is anything to go by, then I can assure you that in the last election, when we went to Kumasi, I had the highest number of votes. When, when, when it comes yeah. to counting, I had the I highest had number of votes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it shows the kind of confidence that people have in me. Uh, they believe that I can deliver. Look, we are in a very serious business, and we want to win 2020. It is not a period for experimentation. It is a period for tried and tested people to be given the mandate to lead the party. And I think that I have been tried, I have been tested, I have what it takes and I believe that with the blessings and the favor of God on me and the NDC, surely 2020 will be ours. And do you agree with those who are saying that John Mahama should join the executive to recapture power? I have no doubt at all that he stands very, very, very tall among all other people who wants to contest for the flag bearership election. And I have indicated time and again that his legacy, whether he contests, or he does not contest, whether he wins or he does not win. His legacy is critical to the success of NDC come 2020. So I'm happy that he has joined the race this morning, and I'm happy that he has indicated that he's coming. It is going to reinvigorate the party. It is going to energize the party, because his inclusion and the, the reaction from the rank and file of the party shows that it's a welcome decision that he has taken. And so, we are all praying. First and foremost, I want to seek my mandate first. So let me concentrate on my mandate. Once I get my chairmanship mandate, I want to assure you that whether it is President John Dramani Mahama who emerges as the flag bearer or any other person, I am prepared to work, work and work so hard to ensure that the NDC recaptures power uh, come December. 2020. That is my commitment and that is the promise that I'm making to the delegates. That I've looked at myself, I believe that uh, the good Lord will give me the strength because what we need is good health to take this responsibility up. And with good health, I am not, I am somebody who is a workaholic and they call me a Jumaura. And so people say that Jumaura is not before a And I believe that I'm coming and I'm coming with a big bank for the party. Thank you very much, Honorable Samuel Officer Ampo, for an aspirant for the chairmanship position of the opposition NDC. Of course, I didn't mention one thing. Um, he's also known as Brassam before two. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> when you go to Eastern region, they call me Iron Boy. Uh -huh. And when you go to Fantiakwa, they call me Dadiakun. Mm -hmm. You know Dadiakun. The meaning is that you are like a steel. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to politics, people know what I'm made up of. I thank God for all these years, and I thank God that what NDC has invested in me through training, both uh, you know, internationally and locally, and I'm also building my capacity. Today, as I speak to you, I'm doing my PhD, I'm going to my third year in PhD, and I'm doing governance, I'm doing leadership, and my research areas is in elections and local government. That's my main research areas. And so I'm doing a lot of research in election management. And... Uh, you can be assured that I will be adding intellectual capacity to organizational capacity. And when intellectual capacity means or meets organizational capacity and they click, victory is ours. Thank you very much. Once again, victory is ours. My name is Chrissy Parker Wilson, and we've been having a conversation with the Director of Elections and the Vice Chair of the Opposition NDC, who is aspiring to become the Chairman of the party.